So for the last couple of your nights, I've been showing you different demos, all surrounding our new data-oriented design technology stack. And we have built a solid foundation for writing high-performance code in Unity. And now we're beginning to build higher-level features on top of it. And we're doing that with real-world production needs to ensure that everything works and performs well out of the box. So what did we want to achieve this time around? We wanted to stream large amounts of content at a solid 60 frames per second. We wanted to go, to, we wanted to go completely nuts with the amount of unique things we can have on screen at the same time. And we had to make sure that we have efficient tools to actually create a large world with a tiny art team of just two artists in a couple of weeks. So before we get into the details, let's have Martin have a play. So hi. So the world we're about to dive into is inspired by the walled city of Kowloon. We've added a bunch of sci-fi elements to it, but let's dive in there. There you go. Perfect. So look at all those cars. There are 5,000 separate AI agents all flying on these traffic lanes, avoiding each other and the player. And the entity component system is uniquely suited for streaming huge amounts of scene elements. Each building that you see here is made out of 30 to 200,000 separate entities. And all of that is streaming and then activating all in one frame while still having a 60 frames per second. And then, for good measure, we put in 100,000 audio sources. Each neon sign, every vent, every flying car has an audio source on it, and that creates that dynamic audioscape. So, we built this project. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we built this project on our in-preview data-oriented design technology and a bunch of optimizations that we did to Unity to make this come together that we're bringing into Unity 2019.1. So we have the C-sharp job system. With that, we can run all of this code on multiple cores, and we can do that easily, and we can do it safely. We have the entity component system, making it easy to lay out all your data for the best memory access performance. And the burst compiler gives incredible speedups by generating efficient machine code for the target platform specifically for C-sharp jobs. And then we also integrated the entity component system with the HDRP and LWRP render pipelines. And we built a scalable renderer for entities. So Martin, how many, how many renderers did you actually end up putting into that scene? 
Well, uh, me and Yenus just kept piling stuff in there, right? But I think at the end we're around four and a half million mesh renderers. Just a couple, just a couple, here and there, sprinkle them around. So, so what we did is we have a culling system that is written in C Sharp using Burst, and we perform hierarchical culling and hierarchical LODs. So when a building is outside the view, there's no reason why we should cull those 200,000 separate renderers. We can just reject them very, very, very quickly. And then we did some intense optimization work on our rendering inner loops to make, make sure that everything is performing beautifully. So this level of performance and scalability allows us to completely change how we author content. And it also means that we can load and edit these scenes really efficiently in the editor. So Martin, show us a little bit about how you actually assemble this content. Yeah, uh, so when a few months ago, which is actually when we started building this, uh, our environment artist Janus and me were approached with this project, which sounded a bit crazy. So how would we build uh, a streaming world by October? Um, to us, this conjured up images of, you know, massive uh, streaming worlds and huge openscapes. Uh, but with very little time, what could we really do in that time space? Uh, so let me dive a little bit into uh, uh, how we build it. Um, so I'm going to open up the scene. And the thing you'll notice is that the LOD system that Joe was just mentioning, you're seeing it in action now. So the first thing it loads in is the HDR. So very quickly we're in the scene, and it's streaming in hierarchically stuff as it encounters it down the line. So it doesn't take long to open a world of this uh, scale and size. And once we're in there, the ECS representation of every mesh renderer actually makes this pretty damn interactive. So we're able to fly in edit mode around our city, vehicles spawning on paths, buildings being streamed. So I'm going to head over here, home in on this particular building which I've practically prepared at the top of my hierarchy. <laughs> and at this level, we just see a single object, because we're still in ECS representation. But it's a sub-scene, and it's part of the streaming scene setup. And I'll open up that for editing. And we'll see that a whole game object appeared underneath it. So these are nested prefabs, right? The entire building is a single prefab. But I can go in on this level and, you know, move stuff about. Uh, maybe I would want to uh, you know, tunnel through the building or something like that. Or at a bespoke game location, this would be the right, right layer of inheritance to do that in nested prefabs. Or I could you know, go deeper into the building itself. And that would allow me to make changes to all buildings of this type. In here, I distribute things like neon lights that are repetitive throughout the scene, but don't repeat that well. So they are, they're good to place on a building level. If I go deeper yet, I can go into a corner tile piece. And this is where the satellite dishes, the air conditioners, the dirty laundry, et cetera, is distributed. And I can go to a leaf prefab node, which is actually a prefab variant, where I have the air condition unit. So this is the level of detail on every prop that you see of the 4.5 million mesh renderers. They are actually fully detailed game assets with every blade modeled, et cetera. Um, and then here we have our ECS sound emitter source as well. So literally every single air conditioner in the entire level is playing its noise. <laughs> we actually don't have any ambient sound loops at all. It's just all the noises coming together. So the benefits of nesting prefabs were quite immediate on this. We could easily manage our base assets with the FB FBX inheritance given by prefab variants. And reduce permutation immensely by having deeply nested hierarchies to form up each city block. So buildings shaped out of tiles, dressed with detailed props. And this made it really easy for us to go and make changes and have them propagate globally. Without this new workflow and the performance provided by ECS, it wouldn't have been possible to maintain this level of detail and polish the city to this amount in, uh, in a few months. So yeah, 
with these new features, everyone from audio de uh, designers to level designers and artists can easily work in parallel and inject their changes anywhere in the hierarchy they wish without obstructing each other. So yeah, to recap, we have a scene with 4.5 million mesh renderers, 100k individual audio sources, 5k dynamical vehicle agent, dynamic vehicle agents, and 200k unique individual objects per building, streaming at a hitch-free 60 FPS. So, Joe, you're getting something ready? Yeah, there's uh, one more thing I want to show you. So, look at this. So our friends at Nordios and the mobile team at Unity worked together to make, to make this demo actually run on a mobile phone. And a lot of you are making games for mobile. And the Entity Component System and the Burst Compiler is a great solution for reducing battery consumption and getting better performance on any hardware. And better performance results in you reaching more users. And that is useful if you're making anywhere from a small 2D game and you just want to reach the lowest end devices all the way to making a large open world like this. And the good thing is all of this, including all the assets that we used in this demo, is going to be available in 2019. 